So as I said, I kind of didn't quite manage to convert on my phone, so had to physically go out and get this tablet in the real world. And I happen to be quite near Sloane Square, and I know there's a Peter Jones there, and they're never knowingly undersold, so it's a good place to start. Peter Jones, Sloane Square. And so I then used maps to find out where it is. And, okay, where are we, where are we? Come on, here we go, whoops. And the great thing is, because we're working with Peter Jones, well, with John Lewis, we also create in-store maps. You see that? Yeah, just about. And I can go through each of the floors. I can even find within the store where exactly I need to get to. And I can also get walking directions from right here, right to that section within the shop by the A4. And what, what I think is quite interesting about this, and I don't know how it happens, because I haven't bothered to email anyone and ask. But what it'll do, sometimes it tells me to take the stairs, and sometimes it takes me, tells me to get the elevator, because it's American. If I scroll right down, you can see it says, I'm meant to walk for 95 feet when I get into the store, and then take the elevator up to the fourth floor. So it even tells me how to navigate the building, which is quite amazing and quite useful. If we switch back to the laptop. And once we all get into stores, what do we do? Well, we research products. Now this, I think, is slightly more recent research than we were listening to earlier. But about 45% of people will research a product when they're in store. And 20% of people will change their mind will decide to buy something else, which is really amazing. And we'll quickly, if we jump back into the wolf fish, and I'll show you what that can look like. Seconds later. Oh, come on. I scanned the wrong barcode there. Give it a go for a product search. No. Okay, that didn't work. Anyway, it worked earlier. That's really upsetting. I'm going to give that one more go because everyone likes a demo that works. And it's also quite enjoyable to see someone struggling massively with a demo. Oh, we do. I just scanned the floor. <laughs> it's, it's nice to see someone in pain on stage, isn't it? We all like that. No, that's not going at all. It might be because this is the very latest one. Anyway, so sadly, I can't show you what that looks like, but often that will just throw you to the nearest retailer that sh that's selling that device. And when I was in store buying this, luckily it was only three pounds cheaper on Amazon, and so I decided to get it there and then. I thought that seems reasonable. If we switch back to the laptop, there's another way that people purchase stuff. Can anyone? Guess what that way is. <laughs> Shout it out, please. Go on. Any phone? Phones? Phones? Yeah, you can be confident with that. Phones! <laughs> it's fine. So, yes, contact centers. So I've never worked in a contact center, so I thought, you know, a bit of method marketing. I would try and, like, find out what a contact center's like. So I did a search on Google Images for call center, and I thought, wow, I know where I'm sending my CV next job. <laughs> wow, what a place. <laughs> Anyone got a contact center? One person. Two people. Three. Is this what it looks like? Yep. Yeah, good. <laughs> um, so I thought we could, we could experiment with a uh, phone call for a purchase. So. As you've all got phones, the first person to make my phone ring gets that Nexus 7. 
So get your phones out and find my number. That's my name. Stay on the phone, by the way. Nobody likes a drop call. I've tried to make this as easy as possible for you. You know, my colleagues are at the back looking really nervous. Hello? Stand up. Stand up. Where are you? Where are you? Brilliant. Well done. Do you know what? Every time I do that, I pick up a load of new people to stalk. Um, <laughs> but the, some of you may have searched for me and got this ad. Probably not many because I've got an absolutely appalling quality score. That's hopefully not for this presentation. You'll get asked later. Don't, 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 don't give me a poor quality score for that, please. So, but what I've done is I've set up a little mini page for myself, and I've also put all my details on there. And I thought, right, I'll do some advertising, because when you search for me, when there isn't any advertising, you get some footballer from the 50s, and that's a bit depressing. So through vanity, I have created this. And on mobile devices, if you search for me, you'll often get this call button, which you can click straight away. And this is using one of our more advanced features, where you can say, OK, this is the telephone number. And when it's on a mobile device, give people a button to call some way. This is our telephone number. Give people a button to call our contact center. And what I've done, because my contact center, me, is only open between 9 and 5, although you will find me in the building from 8.30 till about 7. Um, <laughs> the, the ad will only show the call button between 9 and 5, because I've scheduled it to, to do that. And I've also, gosh, we're streaming this to the internet, aren't, aren't we? By the way, internet, no more nexuses, sorry. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, where was I? It's scheduled to fire only between 9 and 5 and only Monday to Friday because that's when my contact centre is open. And this is something that you can do that will give a better experience to the people that you want to talk to. But how do you know if it's important to you? How do you know if your users are using mobile devices? Well, Daniel covered some of the stuff that you can see within analytics, and that's really the first place you should look. Speak to the person doing your analytics. If you do it yourself, do it yourself. If you're using an agency, speak to them and just ask for the, from them exactly how much traffic you're getting from mobile devices. It's the first thing to do. But then also, we've built, we've, we do research every year into this and publish it, and I'll just quickly show you what that looks like. So we have a thing called Our Mobile Planet, which you can um, search for on a popular search engine. And what you're able to do, you can select the country you want, the mobile behavior you want. And what I've done here is pre-selected all of the other activities that people do whilst using a smartphone. So listen to music, TV, um, other things, and that's all there. But you can also segment that by age or gender to really find it out. You can also look at what year, how it's changed over time. So I can select male and female, and we can see that women are more likely to be using their phones whilst watching television than men are. And you can start comparing these things, but it's slightly less likely to be listening to music whilst they're using their phones. So you can start to understand a little bit more about what, what people are doing. And this tool also allows you to download the information in data tables so that you can merge that with your own information and you can start to have a look at what's going on. But then the next question is, what's it worth? What is the value of this mobile traffic? 
Now, we've also built a tool for that. And actually, let me just go to the home page of this um, and quickly refresh it because because I worked on this project and I absolutely love this animation. That's great, isn't it? <laughs> Never seen Excel do that. And if I jump into the calculator, again, I've pre-populated this with a bunch of stuff. But you can add in, let's say, out of the, what's that, 20,000 clicks that I've got. And let's actually, what we do is, because some of this stuff is a bit confusing, like if someone's clicked on a map on your site, how many people turn up in store, we've also highlighted our research within this. So you can click need help and it'll go through um, various different industries. We're adding to it all the time when we get new research. Um, so for instance, shopping 24%. So let's assume I'm, I'm doing some shops. So let's put on 24% and I'm Don't know who that was, the internet people. Um, so let's say that 30% of people purchase once they get into store and let's say their average purchase is worth £50. Now what we can do, we can go through calls in the same way, we can go through apps, we can go through cross device and where you don't have the data yourself, there's research there that can help you make an assumption. And then you can view a summary. And in this particular example, which is all made up, that my mobile site, if I was just attributing based on mobile site conversions, I'd be getting £330,000 of revenue in the period. Whereas if I take into account these other conversions, I can see it's worth much more to me. So I can start to make better decisions based on that. And what we'd advise you to do is do this kind of thing then choose a small account or an area of um, your account to test this on, test that, and then see if you want to scale it to other ad groups within your account, various things like that. So to sum up what I've covered, you need to find out how many customers are using mobile devices. Again, look at your analytics, talk to the people working on your analytics, or look at our mobile planet. We've got loads of other research. If you go to Think with Google, we've got loads and loads of information on there that you can just grab and use. And then assess how much value mobile is adding. You can use the full value of mobile tool that I showed you, or you can just download the information, the assumptions and the research and build your own models in your own packages, Excel, what have you and measure everything that you can. Use some of the advice that Daniel was giving you earlier with advanced segmenting and biology and stuff and put that in, use those so that you really start to understand more and be less wrong about what you're assuming is happening.